Welcome back. My name is Kit. My name's Madison. And I'm Steve. And this is Streaming Things, Streaming the Boys. Da boys, da boys, da boys, da boys, da boys. Da boys. Uh, this is the season three recap for all of you folks trying to prepare for the season four coverage that as you're listening to this drops, uh, I think, one week from today. Mm -hmm. Correct? I believe so. Yeah. Uh, give or take. Technically, give or take. Give or take a couple yeah. days. Yeah, ish. It's soon. Yeah. Gosh darn it. <laughs> On Prime Video. If only we had a somewhere uh, around a, like a calendar to look at. Like a June 13th. Well, it'd be On all of our devices it has to be, sitting here. This Friday is when this will drop, right? Yeah, so this, so this is the 7th. So yes, the 14th is when we will drop the first episode of season four coverage. Yes. And because uh, Prime Video drops the first three episodes of their new seasons, uh, the Thursday evening of the premiere, you're listening to episode one on the 14th. Episode two will be on Saturday the 15th. And episode three, our coverage, will be on Sunday the 16th. And if you're feeling real frisky, our coverage of season two, episode one of Hot D will drop on Monday the 17th. That's so a, it's like four straight days of streaming things. That's four bangers right there. Yeah, right. Bang, bing, bang, bang. Bing, bing, boom. But then uh, after that, once a week, you'll get uh, the boys season four coverage and House of the Dragon season two coverage. But also, if you didn't know, now you know, we're covering season one of Game of Thrones on our Patreon only. Go to mm -hmm. patreon.com slash streaming things at the $5 tier or above. You get the Game of Thrones coverage uh, at least so once more. a month, an extra bonus episode of like a movie that the patrons get to vote on, as well as a crossing stream, some extra shows and stuff that aren't getting main feed action, newsletters, uh, Steve's feet picks, all that stuff. Well, you do get access to the streaming things or a frame, which I don't know if you can really tell right now. There, That's it's, Casey it's behind me. Yeah, so that aura frame actually... You might be wondering, like, why do I want access to the streaming things aura frame? Well, the goal is I'm moving in like a month. And so the studio will change its style and the aura frame will be much more present. So if you want to see yourself kind of pop up in the background on the photo there, that's what that's for. Yeah. yeah. If you're like a really it narcissistic featured. person. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Featured on the show. Mm -hmm. Yeah. There have been some people in Discord who spot themselves in there and they'll screen grab it like I showed up on this episode. So. God yeah. love them. A lot, a lot of nice. fun. And also, as you're listening to this, it is the 7th of June. Um, pay, uh, tickets for the Streaming Things Live show have been on sale for all of our, for all of our patron members uh, starting this past Monday. But that's okay if you're not on Patreon, but you want to get your live ticket. Tickets go on sale for the general public tomorrow on June the eighth. So if you're if you're hankering to come see our live show on October fifth, get your tickets starting tomorrow on June eighth. That's right, baby. Get your mm -hmm. tickets. Always be plugging. A B P A B P. Yeah, you know me. <laughs> well, let's dive into the boys season three, uh, the the last of our preparatory episodes for season four. Somebody asked in the Discord if we were going to be covering Gen V because it's really like season three point five. Mm -hmm. We will not due to scheduling conflicts. Uh, so just uh, study amongst yourselves. You know, <laughs> definitely watch that. It's very important. Do your own research. Well, That's right. <laughs> that Rewatching season three, I I not seen Gen V yet, so I will definitely be tuning into that after after this. It's definitely it's, it's a great watch. Some mm -hmm. great new actors. Yeah. Um, and uh, but very important for the coverage of season four as well. So just throwing that out there. Uh, but let's dive in, Madison. Uh, what are your thoughts overall on season three? I think if any of them were going to be divisive, it would be season three as far as like the public's reception. Mm -hmm. Overall, very positive. But again, in my opinion, I thought I heard some more flack than I ever had before. Yeah. When I so when I remember when the season three came out, I binged it um, and I really liked it. Um, I think overall first impression, I was like, I feel very confident in the show. It was very I feel like the momentum of the show was has been very continuous since the beginning. Like I haven't really felt like there's been a, a missed beat. Um, I did feel, however, season three was a little bit more tame, I guess, maybe. I don't know. It seemed more politically charged. Not that the show isn't already already political, but I think you have. You think to it maybe got woke? <laughs> <laughs> um, I guess maybe because at the beginning, Huey was more like he was a part of a political campaign and like you had now we're like very close proximity to the quote unquote vice president and, you know, president or whatever. I don't know. It just that seemed a little bit more prominent. And then also this see, this season seemed more race racially charged, if that makes any sense, with A-Train and mm -hmm. Black Noir and um, them trying to integrate a more like diverse seven group. I don't know. It just seemed like that. Be that was more of the. The, that was more of a plot than previously. Um, but 
Overall, I mean, I I still enjoyed season three. I think it's hard for me to rank the seasons because I feel like each season has a different purpose for the show and the progression of all of the character stories. Um, Like I said, I feel like season three was a little bit more tame, but I think it still holds up to seasons one and two. Um, And it, it, again, got me really excited for season four, um, which we're kind of already diving into. And so far it's, it's great. So I, I really did enjoy season three. Um, I did notice after the fact that there was some discord, uh, with the ending. Um, but I personally enjoyed the ending. I thought it kind of showed the, just the craziness of ultimately what, um, Homelander's character is embodying, which is this like overuse of power and abuse of power. So, uh, yeah, I, I liked it through and through. What about you, Steve? So this is actually, I can unequivocally say this is my least favorite season of all three by a pretty significant margin. And it has nothing to do with the ending. Cause I know there, there's like a, like you said, there's this discord about people not liking the ending. I think the ending's great. Like, I think the season gets better the more you get into it. Mm-hmm. Cause by the end, I, I really, I think the season finally, the, the first half of the season just feels like they're just trying to like, they don't really know what they're doing. They're mm-hmm. just kind of like dragging around. I think when they finally get to uh, soldier boy, that's when the, the season kind of starts picking up and it starts having like, okay, I know what we're doing. We're, we have a mission. Here we go. Um, but, the, and I was trying to really think about why is this season the one that I, I just wasn't having as much fun with, at least in the first half of it. And in a weird way, uh, when you say like this is the most tame season, I would I didn't think it. I don't think it is like uh, the. I mean, the first season has a guy walk up uh, another dude's pee hole, his urethra, and then explode him from the inside out. Uh, <laughs> that's that's one of the more visceral things I've ever seen put on TV in my life. It was kind of funny, but um, that, there's this weird like this is a pretty cynical show overall. It's just kind of like the media sucks. Superheroes are just people. They would do all this terrible stuff to us and to each other. But there's like, and I don't know if, if if I'm the only one feeling this, but I feel like there was this season three was way more jaded. Like it seemed like, mm. hey, we're doing this weird fucked up stuff, but like, bleh, like it just seemed like we didn't. It seemed like there was no spirit to it. It was just like we were doing fucked up shit to do fucked up shit, kind of more in line with what the comic is, I guess. Mm. Um, and again, like I said, like by the end of the season, I think it gets better and better, and everything seems to has a little bit more of a point to it. But for the first half, I was like, this is just kind of it feels a little mean. And, and mean spirited in a way that the other seasons weren't like there was fucked up shit that happens in season one and two for sure. But there was like a tongue in cheek levity to it that I don't think is quite there with this season. And another thing that I was shocked by is like if, if I knew there were two things I knew going into the season that were spoiled for me. That was one, the, the existence of Soldier Boy. Like I knew um, what is it, Aaron Eccles. Is that Jensen Eccles. Jensen er, Jensen Eccles Jensen Eccles? Thank you. Like I knew he was Soldier Boy and he would just appear and then the other thing Soldier I had, Boy, tell him. Soldier, <laughs> soldier Boy, Soldier Boy. Um, and the other thing I had spoiled for me was the Herogasm event. Mm-hmm. Like, mm-hmm. that was just something that everyone was, like, talking about. Oh, my God, Herogasm. It's so fucked up. Whoa. And so in my mind, I'm like, okay, when's Herogasm happening? Like, I, I can't wait for that insanity. Like, the dude blew up his his partner's pee hole in the first episode. I can't imagine mm-hmm. what the Herogasm is going to be. And then I got to Herogasm, like, okay, like. Pretty I mean, standard orgy. Pretty, pretty standard orgy stuff. Like every now and then someone's walking in the background with a horn sticking out of their head. But like, <laughs> I was just kind just of normal. like, oh, all right. Like, I feel like people kind of like really mm. uh, uh, set the expectation bar for that really high for me. So when I got to it, I was just kind of like, oh, okay. Well. Like kind of built it up like uh, the the big scene in Game of Thrones. The Red Wedding. Red Wedding. Yeah. And it was, yeah. It was just kind of like a, I mean, it's like a chartreuse wedding, if anything. Mm-hmm. You know? uh, but it's a good day for a, a white wedding. <laughs> Come on. Uh, so overall, I don't think it's a bad season. Like I, uh, I, but I think the first half really put a damper on the rest of it for me. Cause like mm-hmm. once Soldier Boy got in and they started cooking with, you know, with him and kind of dragging him around. And also the whole idea like of Butcher and Billy using V. Like, I understand the storyline, and I think it works. Butcher Huey? and Billy? Butcher and Huey. Butcher and Billy, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Butcher and Huey, excuse me. Um, I understand the story. I think it makes sense. I think the, the the way they follow through with it in the end is really good. But the whole time, I was also kind of like, oh, I, well, part of the reason why I like the show is the boys don't have yeah. that superpower. And it's like, how are they going to do it? 
And I like that they're, they, they kind of did it. They got it out of their system, but this is kind of a season. I'm like, okay, this is a point. Let's get from season two to season four for me. And I'm glad we're past it. I don't think it's bad. I just didn't like it nearly as much as I like the first two seasons overall. But what about you, Kit? Yeah, I, uh, I can understand all of that. I just don't, if I have to be honest, I didn't feel that way when I saw season three, you know, I binged right through it. Mm -hmm. Um, I watched it week to week, but you know, I tore through it. was interested to watch each episode. Um, and I think there's a, a, it has a lot of the things that I hate. (laughs) And what what I mean by that is like, there's some divide in this show. And I, 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 I've said before in many different ways that I I really don't like like these manufactured character conflicts that seem like they're just Oh, we didn't know what to do for a couple episodes. So let's mm-hmm. separate the characters uh, yeah. via things that they could easily fix by just talking. And so like you have Annie and Huey fighting through a lot of the season. You have Butcher kind of separating himself from the crew. And so a lot of the really fun things about the show, the Spice Girls being together, mm-hmm. um, you know, it's it's not. But I never felt that way at the time, I don't think. You know, it seemed like an arc that Huey needed to go through. Um and I, that's why I love the culmination at the end of him empowering Annie with the lights rather than taking the V. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, I, and I like the whole bit of, of, of Butcher just being consumed by his hatred of Homelander. And I think, that, you know, it all makes sense. And I see why they're going there. And I never felt at the time like, oh, this is a drag to get through. They but also, I could see someone thinking that. They also do a thing that I, I think a lot of shows that I find annoying they do where they're like, here's a very crucial piece of information that we've with, withheld from the audience for two seasons. And then we dump it on you. And then that's a character's motivation. It's like, well, I feel like I should have known that. If I'm speaking specifically to like Mother's Milk's family being mm. killed by Soldier Boy. Because mm-hmm. they talk about how his, his dad died fighting Vought. But then here's this whole other thing like, oh, I actually hate superheroes because uh, one of them killed my grandfather. It's like, well, I feel like I should have known that. And this feels very like... Yeah, we need something. We need a conflict. So here's this that we just made up yeah. in the season. It wasn't, though, like that is the lore of the comics. Sure. But, but I feel like they should have set it up better, set that up a little bit better. because they do reference Soldier Boy previously in previous seasons. Right. They've, they've talked about him, but not in in reference to Mother's Milk. Right. His personal connection to him. Yeah. Um, And also, I think it's worth mentioning here. I can't remember if it's in our season two recap or if it was in our season four, episode one coverage that we've already recorded inside baseball. We've already recorded. We've been watching season four and we're just trying to get through this. But I talked about how uh, Eric Kripke, the the showrunner mentioned that it was only going to be five seasons of the boys, which I was really excited about. I like when a show fucking ends because that means they're not just dragging, walking, deading it, you know, and because that show was great for six seasons or so. The show becomes a zombie of itself. Yeah. Mm, But now he has walked that back and said that he was smoking some ganja and (laughs) No uh, season five plans for for it to be the end. He was on the V. And I just don't mm-hmm. see how you could carry the show much longer and have it still be as good as it is, you know, yeah. without, a, you know, uh, how, how long can they chase fucking Homelander around before right. I get right. sick of this? So, yeah. Well, and also to, you know, I feel like Homelander's end is near or someone's end is Nigh, near. you could say. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> but like once Homelander is gone, I feel like you don't have much of a show or once Billy's gone, like, I don't, I don't know. So yeah, I am concerned. curious. Yeah. Curious to see how, how they would do that. I was but. pretty excited for the five season plan. Now I'm a little concerned, mm-hmm. uh, but that is a little let's just stay in the present and enjoy season four. <laughs> we'll see yeah, what they do. do <laughs> you know? Uh, but yeah, so the boys season three, after the fallout of season two, we have the dawn of the seven movie propaganda kind of uh, retelling uh, and glossing over the events as they happened. But there is a, a bit of a truce between Homelander and Annie and the gang because they have the blackmail video of him. Uh, and so there's a, a, a pause in there. That's why they're not just killing each other. Right. Mm-hmm. Uh, uh, Huey is able to openly date Annie now. So that's a good change. And he's working at the Bureau of Superhuman Affairs with Congressman, uh, Congresswoman, excuse me, Newman. And he's enjoying his new friendship with her. We, the, 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 I kind of wish we had more. Honestly, I really like that dynamic of the two of them. Mm-hmm. Yeah, working. I feel like there's a bit later that, that happens where it's like, I didn't really get the vibe that they right. were that close. <laughs> yeah. A lot of the relationship happens off screen and they just yeah. kind of tell us like, we're really good friends. I babysat your daughter. Like, well, did, uh, does she have a daughter? Oh, I guess she does. Yeah, yeah she definitely does. No, but, I know, but, but at that point, I was just kind of like, I don't remember oh. her having one. Yeah, anyway, I agree. Uh, we get like the Ant-Man analog who uh, Termite? kills the dudes by 
growing inside of his dick. Yeah. Well, I like how they call him termite because he eats wood. <laughs> I didn't even think about that. <laughs> yeah. Wow. <laughs> wow. Uh, That's but amazing. Billy catches him, but doesn't kill him. Like he's trying to be better. You know, mm-hmm. he's trying Just to be like reined in a little bit. Puts him in some cocaine. He does. That was funny. Yeah. It's a great Well, doesn't sequence. he blow him up by sneezing? Right? He like sneeze, sneezes inside of his. Yeah. And that's when he accidentally grows yeah. to full size. Yeah. He killed his, he killed his friend accidentally. I We've all to, been there. I need to say, when I said the show was tame, I wasn't necessarily referring to like the crazy shit that was happening. I mean, tame as far as like, I don't know, like. Like it's pulling its punches with some of its themes. It's kinda. Yeah. Okay. Like I, there's still some crazy scenes such as this one and hero gasm and you know, the, the things that happen between Homelander and deep and stuff like that. But I just needed to clarify because like, yes, there's some crazy <laughs> shit that happens in this season. You're just desensitized. You know, you've seen so many I, dicks seen, explode. I, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I have. I, I didn't. Okay. No. <laughs> yeah. Walked um, into that one. Yeah, yeah you did. Um, so, yeah, you did. Uh, <laughs> we're done with the metaphors, the dick metaphors. Yeah, Billy's trying to be better. Uh, he's, try- he's also trying to be a good role model for Ryan, who mm-hmm. he's protecting at Becca's behest. Right. Uh, Starlight is becoming more popular with the fans than even Homelander. Her, her ratings are way up. So she becomes co-captain of the seven, something that is hard for Homelander to stomach. You guys can interrupt me if you want to like focus on anything at any point. When they offered that co-captain chair, like I really liked her reaction to it. Cause as a, as a viewer, you're also like, no, that that is a terrible idea to do that. And and so I was, Mm -hmm. I appreciated Annie was also like, I I know (laughs) that would be awful. And she has to be kind of convinced to do it. Mm-hmm. which I think makes a lot of sense for her character. I thought that was good. Yeah, anybody should be hesitant to sit near Homelander. And really, and, 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 I mean, I think Giancarlo Esposito can like talk us into anything, honestly. He would mean. Yeah. Hello. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I'll do it. Um, I want you to buy stock in Toys R Us. It's generally sexual, what I'm about to ask. <laughs> I th- I'm okay. You will agree to it. <laughs> uh, Huey. I will meet you at the time of 8 p.m. <laughs> Eastern Standard Time. <laughs> I, I'll give you what I call my dark saber. <laughs> Let me introduce you to Termite. <laughs> Hello. Hello. <laughs> <laughs> Huey, he finds out that Congresswoman Newman Huey? is the head popper. Yeah. And that's upsetting for him. Uh, and it turns out that she grew up in a superhero orphanage that is for people who accidentally killed their parents, you know, people who are uncontrollable, which is where it starts to relate heavily with Gen V. Um, which, did you guys notice that Still, Stillwell's child is in there? Teddy Stillwell. Yeah. Yeah. She mentioned there's a Stillwell yeah. drop. Mm-hmm. Oh, I didn't recall that. Yeah. Because yep. that's the kid that exposed Huey. He pointed at the TV and was like, oh, look, that's who this guy is. And the woman was like, don't I know you? And Huey made the whole plot of like, oh, yeah, me and Annie are like wanting to, you know, adopt, blah, 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 blah. Dang. Yeah. Little, still, still, little still stillies. Else, yeah. I wonder if we'll, we'll finally see that kid come back in any in any Maybe. meaningful way. Secret I want the laser eye later. baby that Butcher used. I want Butcher to adopt I that mean, baby. Like, that's how the his Butcher story is. Butcher is the laser eye baby. I know. They yeah. use laser eye powers a lot. Mm-hmm. I get it. It's like the default. It's a default soup feet, thing. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Soup. Yeah. I assume they want to like make a even greater parallel between he and Homelander as well. Yeah, that's true. They're two sides of the same coin. Uh. <laughs> we are not too different. You and I, right? One of those moves. We um, both have daddy issues oh. and are bad fathers. My dad's John, John Noble. <laughs> he would eat cherries and make me sing him songs while my older brother would go into battle and die. Jason Statham's my father. <laughs> The Germans. <laughs> she was adopted by Stan Edgar. Plot twist. Um, they've been working together the whole time. So what is she up to? Mm-hmm. Right. Homelander's on a, a press apology tour for having dated a Stormfront, a.k.a. a Nazi. But he actually doesn't feel sorry about that. He loves and visits Stormfront all the time. But then she dies on his birthday. And that's when he snaps. <laughs> I love this. She wouldn't do that. Yeah. It's, it's my, my birthday. birthday. Yeah. <laughs> and she like ate her tongue. Yeah, she, yeah, she like choked. Cho- yeah. yeah, like Just people used it. to say what happened to you d- during a, cer- a, a seizure, mm. but that's apparently not a thing. It's like Choking a on your tongue? Yeah, it's like a Mythbusters thing, I think. Mm. Something like that. But she she does, it's implied that she does bite her tongue and choke on the, yeah. Yeah. the piece. Yeah. That's possible. Yeah. I, you know, it's, it's hard to kind of sympathize with a Nazi, but it's something about uh, Homelander being like, here, give me a <laughs> handy while you're on your deathbed. Death like, it's yeah. like, ew. <laughs> Not a good ruthless. Look. Yeah, real ruthless. And she's she like, must have won. He must have won trivia. Yeah, he must have <laughs> demanded yeah. his prize. Yeah, 
babe, you won't believe what happened. I was at <laughs> Buffalo Wild Wings, and I won the trivia game. Ooh, good boy. Good job. Um, Didn't what her hands blown off, though? One of, they, one of them was. One of them? Oh, She's still oh, only one of them? All you need is one. That's that She's just true. nubbing it. <laughs> yeah. No, no, no. Yeah, I mean, if you nub it at the right angle, you maybe. You can't get the right traction. No. Yeah. Um, <laughs> so then Homelander goes on a public rant. That's when he snaps after Stormfront dies. He's like, you know what? I'm not going to do this anymore. I'm better than all of you. Oh, God. His rant still makes me laugh because a- Annie's saying like, and thank- and Homelander decided to donate generously to my, you know, what is it? Starlight House, you know. Yeah, like for- $10 million. And he's just, no, 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 <laughs> no, no, I'm not doing that. No. <laughs> I'm and- surprised that's not like a gif like that people share around of him. No, no. No, the, the, one, Star, no. the one sound bite that was taken that I would see frequently on TikTok from the show was uh, when Homelander is talking to Ashley and he's Ashley, like, look at me. Yeah. Ashley, look at me. And it would like, but it would be like dubbed over like with like a rap music or like, yeah. like some bassy like bom, bom, bom. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. It's a good edit. You know, you also yeah. hear this one a lot. It was perfect. Yes. Perfect. perfect. You hear that one a lot. Yeah. Um, And then. Uh, at this point, he realizes that some people do like his rant and he could just be himself and he will have like a core audience and he can s- succeed that way. He's just got to play to the base. So at this point, he calls Starlight's bluff. He's like, all right, do it. Expose my video. At that point, I'll have nothing holding me back from just ruling the world and killing everyone. Mm-hmm. Uh, Honestly, and, pretty smart play by him. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So and he has like this split personality, you know, part of him does want to be a, not a good person but he's like damaged and like he's a mommy's boy and yeah, then and deep down you know you're just a hu- you're just human and he's like no i'm not yeah, yeah. I'm not, no, not no i'm a special flying boy <laughs> wrapped in an american flag <laughs> i am the chosen i one. i just like milk who doesn't wait till he finds out one guy's named mother's milk He's going to love him. He's going to eat him up. (laughs) What do you think Homelander's thoughts are on like all the many different types of milks? Like, is he like, Like is he drinking oat milk? milk? Is he drinking almond milk? milk? He's definitely not an almond guy. He's not a nut milk guy. Is he Mm -hmm. dipping his toes into pickle milk? Like, what are we doing here? (laughs) I think he's a straight dairy guy. Mm. If it's, if if it doesn't come out of an actual organic nipple, he's not having it. Yeah. Yeah. Or some kind of udder. Is this this the udder season? milk for sure. Oh yeah. And it's whole milk for sure. He needs them calories. Is this the udder Utter milk season where he goes to the cow and makes his own milk. I can't recall. Okay. I'm not sure. Because then Newman joins him at some point and it's like, what are you Probably. doing? It has to be. She's like, get your shit together, dude. It has to be. It has to be three then. Yeah. yeah. If it's Newman. Uh, but then we're introduced <laughs> to Soldier Boy. So just for some, uh, you know, if you recall, he was in the the leader of the original crew. Payback. 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 Not the seven. Back in the 40s. He's the Captain America kind of analogy. Uh, and, what a and, great uh depiction of a Captain America character. Oh, it's great because he's from yeah. the 40s and it's like, oh, they would be super intolerant and racist and uh, for mean. sure. Men really wear that today. <laughs> <laughs> Back in my day, we kicked their ass for wearing a, a, a baby Bjorn. Yeah, yeah, he's so good. And he's uh, making the comment to to Grace of like, why don't you smile for me, honey? And, you know, and she's like, that doesn't work on women. She's like, yes, it does. And she's like, no, it's just because they're scared of you or they just want to make you happy. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. Good. It, That's all I want. Yeah. That's what he's thinking. Because he does the truth, justice, American way thing, but he's just like super intolerant and a dick. And mm-hmm. the, I was laughing out so loud when uh, it's him and Huey are in that um, apartment complex and they're watching TV. And I think he starts off commenting on like the baby born, like, oh, men wear that. I'll tell you what. If people were raised like, like by people like America's dad, Bill Cosby, we wouldn't be in this situation. Yeah. <laughs> and then he was like, oh, no, like, man, I love yeah. that Bill Cosby. Strong drinks, though. <laughs> Thank Jesus. You. Below was, the belt punches. Good. This episode of Streaming Things is sponsored by Better Help. Better Help. You know, Steve, is there something I need to get off my chest? What's that, fella? It's been weighing on me. You know that I resigned at the day job recently, right? Mm, and I've been did. a little scared. There's a family to worry about. There's health insurance. There's mm. capitalism. Sounds like a stressful time. But we all carry around different stressors, big and small. It feels better when you bring something to the light and keep them bottled up. It can start to affect us negatively. And therapy is a safe space to get things off your chest and to figure out how to work through whatever's weighing you down. In my case, it's all of the stress, the misery, the fear, 
but I had to come over here and share that with you. Yeah. And I felt better. You know, that's a real thing that happened. Yeah. Uh, unloading all that on you and Erica and feeling better myself. That's uh, it sounds like my Friday night. Sometimes you just need somebody to listen. So if you're thinking of starting therapy, give BetterHelp a try. It's entirely online, designed to be convenient, flexible, and suited to your schedule. Just fill out a brief questionnaire to get matched with a licensed therapist and switch therapists at any time for no additional charge. If you're not vibing, that's completely fine. So get it off your chest with BetterHelp. Visit BetterHelp.com slash streaming things to get 10% off your first month. That's BetterHelp, H-E-L-P dot com slash streaming things. It's the month of May, a very special month that is very near and dear, close to my heart. And it's that time of the month where we get to send a huge virtual hug and a round of applause to some truly stellar individuals. Our super patrons at the Tribe Before You Deny tier and above. You all make this show possible and it's time you get a special shout out. So thank you very much to Stanton Valentino, Maddlestat, Susie Callahan, Anthony Corona, Sunshine, Huckleberry Cauliflower, Ashley Hazen, Mike from New Hampshire, Brett S. Emily Scarano, Lil Tickler, Svento7, Jay Scramo, Bluff Pum, AK Ashley Ray, Adam Busby, Wendy O'Loughlin, Jason Hawkins, Conrad, Kaylee Sampson, Rabbit Dog in a Barbie Car, Charlie Friday, Alexis Adler, Peaches, Emmy, Haley B, Joe Velez, John Collins, Amanda King, Trisha Bueller, Sun Loving Mortal, Suzanne Rode, Jen Robinson, Kalisha Reeves, Aaron Armstrong, Kevin Strother, Ashley Powers, Stephen V, Casey McCain, and Enza. A massive thank you to each of you and to all of our patrons at every level. Even if you're not at the shout out tier, your support means the world to us. We couldn't do it without you and we hope you feel as much a part of the Streaming Things community as we do every day. And with that, how about we get back to the show? So M.M. has quit the team to spend more time with his daughter and this is where we get introduced to his ex-wife's new boyfriend. Um, But he's back in the boys because Soldier Boy was the soup that killed his family. Um, so that's Todd? the motivation there. Todd. Todd, mm-hmm. Todd pulls. And he does. We find out. <laughs> we may or may not find out why. Todd's packing. <laughs> that, that was one of the most unbelievable things when he opens the door like, hi, I'm dating your wife, Monique. I was like, what? 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 I love how they basically how? call attention to that later on. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and Frenchie and Kamiko, their romance is going strong uh, throughout this season. That's just where they're at as far as the plot threads go. Mm-hmm. So they go to get the story of what happened to Soldier Boy from another member of his crew, the Crimson Countess, basically the Scarlet Witch of this world. They end up having to oh, fight her, as okay. they always do. Uh, and meanwhile, she's mean, like, oh, like, oh, I see the parallels <laughs> yeah, now. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Meanwhile, uh, Butcher. I love that she's just working at a, a ver- like the most depressing Disneyland yeah. ever. Like a carny. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, Butcher goes to talk to Gunpowder, another member of Payback, who shoots Butcher, but he's got temporary V. So we find out this whole plot thread that Stan Edgar fixed the problem of how they couldn't really give soldiers soup abilities because you can't really control them. But they found a way to give them temporary soup abilities and they can make a fortune selling that to the U.S. government because they'll have to need more and more of it. Mm-hmm. Um, and One then- major drawback, though. Can't use it very often. Yeah, yeah, you'll die after three to five uses, but that's not revealed till later in the season. Um but he had gotten temporary V from Maeve, right? And through gunpowder, he learns that Soldier Boy um, died in Nicaragua, or from the Crimson Countess, I think. Um, yeah, because the, the official story is that he died saving a town from like a nuclear mm-hmm. a plant kind of going under. Like he prevented a Chernobyl on American soil, yes. basically, and that's how he died. But really, he died on this mission in Nicaragua. Working for the CIA, the original like soups for the government move that we didn't know about. Led by... Mallory. Mallory. Mm -hmm. And Frenchie has an old boss by the name of Nina that can get them into Russia to find out what happened. But Kamiko has to do a hit job for Nina. And that's where she starts to think, I don't want to do this anymore. I don't want to be a superhero that like murders people and stuff. This sucks. Yeah. Um, So Frenchie and Kamiko decide that after this one last job, they're out. And as in every movie and TV show, one last job always works out. Right. (laughs) Um, But during, you know, they find out about the Russian operatives and uh, Huey takes the temp V while he's there. So he gets like a nightcrawler kind of powers. powers, Yeah. Yeah. But his clothes don't teleport, which is a funny little gag. Yeah. Kamiko's like, oh, (laughs) 
Yeah. Petit Huey. I don't know why they call you that now. <laughs> Enorm Huey. <laughs> Petit Huey. <laughs> Petit Huey. Good they, day, Huey. They find out that Soldier Boy is, in fact, alive. And since they've been doing experiments on him, he has a new power. It's like this radioactive explosion that cancels out other superheroes' abilities, like takes their powers away from them when they're hit with it. Mm-hmm. Kamiko gets hurt and hit by this at the same time. So she doesn't have her healing ability anymore. Uh, her powers are gone. Oh. And meanwhile, Starlight is having it's putting on this reality show to choose a new hero for the seven and she picks supersonic which is actually her ex-boyfriend like her friend from her teenage years and she wants a, an ally on the seven to help mm-hmm. her fight homelander if need be homelander chooses the deep so he's back mm, he's got the deep his wife and manager is basically a pr expert and he's getting all this good publicity from exiting scientology essentially the fresca mm-hmm. cult yeah um but in the whole this is where homelander makes the deep eat an octopus Timothy. that's Timothy. alive. Timothy. That was honestly maybe one of the hardest scenes to watch in all of it the was. boys. Yeah, because the deep is like, he's begging for his life. He says he has a family. <laughs> <laughs> and, you know, he, then he like gets this text from his wife who's sitting at the dinner table. It's like, eat the fucking octopus. <laughs> <laughs> and Ashley is just going to town on her seafood on the other side of the table. Yeah. <laughs> it's the best yeah. meal she's had in a while. Yeah. Poor but Ashley. Then he, he puts Timothy in his mouth and he hasn't bitten down. He's like, he's praying. <laughs> <laughs> He's praying. It's terrible. Well, and I like the animation of the octopus going in because it kind of like slaps his face a yeah, little it's bit. To like, stay out. yeah. Um, but it's just it's. It's yeah. like that scene from Old Boy because there's also like a squid oh. octopus thing where they has to eat alive, which apparently is something you know cultures some cultures do. Yeah, yeah. is eat that shit, but it's not good for the deep because you can hear him talk. And it's like you don't want to sympathize with the deep because like he he's sucks. he's a piece of shit, but yeah. like. It just, you know, the fact that you are sympathizing with him because Homelander is such a scumbag and is making him eat a friend, a friend of his. Yeah. yeah. It's like cannibalism to the deep. Really. Yeah. Yeah. And you're eating a like a that's a person to him named Timothy that he's eating alive that mm-hmm. he he, he uh, <laughs> a Timothy's a sex voyeur. So they like they're like bros where he's having sex with his wife and Timothy's in the cage like, yeah, dude, that's awesome. <laughs> yeah. Get it. And he's like it. slapping five with the tentacles and then, oh no, I'm going to eat my sex for your friend. Yeah. Well, that's Ambrosius. So the <laughs> Timothy's, no, Timothy's in the, in the tank when they first have sex. Is it? Yeah. I don't think that's Timothy. Cause later is when I, the I, scene I, happens with his wife. I think it is beca- because, he's already eaten because Timothy. that's the, no, well that's the the thing. Cause he introduces the, the octopus like, oh, my friend is in the tank. And then when he's like, oh, you have to eat Timothy. He's like, oh no, that's the octopus. We know. Cause we don't, we're not introduced to Ambrosius until later when he starts having a relationship with another octopus that's Ambrosius. Right. But I don't think Timothy is the octopus in the tank while they're having sex. I think that is the other one. And Tim, because Timothy's a lot smaller than the octopus that was in the, the tank. Betty Fox. Yeah. Because remember the, the octopus is like in the tank is, you know, She's exposing herself mm-hmm. while they're having sex. And I think that's what's turning the deep on. Yeah. S- Timothy was an octopus that lived at the aquar- in the aquarium inside the deep's room. One day he witnesses the deep and his wife have sex, an act that made him sexually aroused. Instead of giving getting mad at him, the deep encourages the creature to even start to perform an act of foreplay with Timothy. Oh. Later, he has to eat Timothy. Because Ambr- oh, okay. yeah, Ambr- uh, Timothy is tiny. He's like a little, he's a little, yeah. he's a little dude. And the th- that first octopus that he has sex in front of is a is a smaller octopus. But then mm-hmm. later, when he's like trying to like, hey, you want to have a be a have a throuple situation with this octopus? Uh, Ambrosius is in a, not the the, the one, one tank. It's oh, in a okay. side tank that he pulls out, and she's much bigger. I see. I see. They're gonna be bigger to she's, she's hang. A, she's a thick lady. <laughs> Thicky. And A Train's plot line is such that he can't run anymore at all because of his heart. Mm-hmm. Um, and there's a whole bunch of, um, really, I think really effective bits, especially about what, what's been going on in the country over the last eight years or so. Well, 150 to 500, but <laughs> give or take also like even longer, all of the stuff that's in the, uh, in the forefront, uh, specifically like he, he, he has this commercial that's, is he going to end racism? No, he's just selling an energy drink. You know, it, yeah. it, it talks that, about and, the pandering and, and that's, stuff. Ma- that's making fun of that Pepsi commercial that came out around that time that people yes. were like, well, what the fuck is that man? Yeah. It was wild. Um, and Homelander killed Supersonic because he heard their plans Mm -hmm. uh, about teaming up with Starlight and uh, he's just not going to have it. Also, Homelander, like, 
paints this picture that him and Starlight are together. Mm-hmm. And like, I hated that. That yeah. made me so mad because I, I am such a stan of Huey and Annie. I think they're super cute. I think they're they're the heart of the show, in my opinion. Um, and so when Homelander did Homelander did that one, I was not expecting that at all. It was super bizarre Two, he like threatens Huey in front of Annie. And like, it's already kind of like setting this tone or I should say setting Huey up to be like, oh, am I going to like let Annie protect me or am I going to like it, it, it like teeters him his choice to like take Tim V and yeah. stuff like that. Which it's part I, of his yeah. jealousy kind of thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And also you just feel so bad for Annie when he just kind of springs that on her. Because it's yeah. at the the uh, the the season finale of yeah. America's Top Superhero, whatever they're doing, mm-hmm. and Supersonic wins the one spot, but then the Deep wins the other, and that's when he like announces to the world, and she didn't know that, and the way yeah. she just kind of like, and it's so sad because she knows that she has to play this game, and she leans into it, which I think surprises Homelander, but at the same time you're just kind of like, because there's that shot of her like clutching her fist the whole time, and it's, yeah, like, it's oh, always like a, a PR war between them, you know, it's always yeah. passive aggressive. Because yeah. that's all they can use against him mm-hmm. is is the publicity. Yeah, and, so. and as soon as they think they have like a leg up on the situation, they get knocked down like two more steps, and it's it's rough. Yeah, and Edgar, uh, Stan Edgar, wants Newman, his adopted daughter, to investigate Homelander. He's sick of all the the swinging that he's been doing, dick swinging. Um, and, but Homelander had given her like V compound V for her daughter. So she, unbeknownst to us, she turns on Edgar and now dun, Homelander dun, dun, dun. is in charge of Vought, not Edgar. He gets pushed out. He's like, okay, good luck running the company. You know, it's not as easy as you think it's an actual company and he's terrible at it. He fires everybody competent. He makes Ashley his CEO, uh, who now has an assistant named Ashley. And we get this also, ho- Ashley. also Ashley. Yes. That's like the best name in the credits ever. Yeah. This horrible vision of her. She had been pulling out all of her hair for like the last season she and like a half. Take, takes the wig off. Yeah. And she's like near bald. It's stressful. Worried about getting laser eyed all the time. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, but she does have every a fun, corporate job I've ever had. Uh, sexual release partner. I thought that was fun. Yeah. Oh. Strap on the is, is American that, dildo. Is that the uh, the the right wing talk show host that they cut to every now and then i, I think, think so. so okay yeah. <laughs> that was a pleasant surprise I was like, <laughs> you gotta peg that dude every now and then hey, get as, your long, attention as out. long as it's a, an american flag dodo yeah i'm in but if it's yeah. a rainbow one forget a, it oh, patriot oh man uh <sighs> soldier boy is hunting down everybody on his old team payback um and he makes a deal with butcher you know because he wants to take out homelander and this yeah, is we, we find out they sold him out yeah. Yes. Yeah. So that's I how guess he got taken away. Homelander back in his day was so similar to Homelander in that way. Soldier, Soldier Boy. Boy was so similar to Homelander in that way that he was also sort of like bullying everybody on his team and just like being this like megalomaniac with all of them. And so they decide that they were going to turn on him and give him up to the Russians. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And we get hero gasm around this point. Uh, and because that's where the twins are, the TNT twins. Yeah, right? yeah, they're, they're hosting the fiftieth annual annual I hero think it's gasm, seventieth hero hero gasm. They've been having these for a long time. I, mm-hmm. I love Soldier Boy. Like, I can't believe they're doing a hero gasm. I started this whole thing. <laughs> <laughs> and there's that really funny line where there's so the two there's the two teams. There's Butcher Huey and Soldier Boy sneaking into hero gasm, and then there's Annie and Mother's Milk also sneaking into hero gasm separately. Yeah. And both teams comment, "Man, Frenchie's going to be so upset he missed hero gasm <laughs> <laughs> yeah, for sure." <laughs> <laughs> and but Soldier Boy ultimately ends up accidentally like blowing up the whole place, mm-hmm. killing most people. Um, and we get the fight between Soldier Boy and Homelander, and uh, Soldier Boy is kind of losing. But then Butcher comes in, hopped up on Temp V. And then Huey's there as well, able to teleport and stuff. So they basically are, they're about to take out Homelander. They're winning, but he gets away. Uh, but they got tons of innocent people killed. Annie and Huey, uh, Annie and Huey, Annie and Huey have a fight. That's where the F was coming in. Mm-hmm. Um, and this, this is the point where she tells everybody the truth on social media. She's got millions of followers on social mm-hmm. media. And she decides to tell them most superheroes suck. Homelander's the worst of them all. Um, just throws all of her eggs in that basket. I mm-hmm. quit. And Homelander is, ends up threatening her, but she catches him on a live stream. Herogasm, uh, the, the biggest takeaway for me during Herogasm is, uh, um, uh, what's that guy's name that A-Train's trying to kill? Blue Hawk? Blue, Blue Hawk. Hawk. So Blue Hawk is this sort of like, I don't really understand what his powers are, but he polices mostly black neighborhoods and he's kind of, he's obviously he super racist, racist. Yeah. and he's targeting uh, black people. And A-Train 
Adrian's brother, who's his coach, is trying to get him to be more involved with the community and like, hey, man, mm-hmm. you're a very popular black man. You can do a lot for the the cause and the culture and everything. And A-Train is kind of like not really in like he's he's into it, but more for himself. Like he's all about the PR and the image. He's not really into the 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 fight. And Blue Hawk ends up like just like kill it, getting his brother paralyzed. And so at this point, he's like at here. He goes to apologize. A fake apology for the racist yeah. act. But then during that, he does it so insincerely that he ends up paralyzing his brother from them being yeah. angry at him. Right. But I like how this is kind of like mirroring what Atrian essentially did to Robin. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Because he shows up and sees Huey there and Huey's like, oh, now you care suddenly mm-hmm. like that, that you are the, now that you're the victim of this. Now you give a shit. And that's like the first time in the whole show, I think, like where Atrian's like shit i guess yeah Yeah. i like this might be the turning point yeah for that character and he ends up just like finding blue hawk and doing a mortal combat fatality on him which Which is pretty dope something else that i want to point out about the show um i feel like the writing is very buttoned up like for season three to reference something that happened in season one and for it to still have the emotional capacity to like I don't know, not only highlight this character and the character arc that a train is on, but just to like, I, I don't know, because I feel like in, in some seasons, some series we have like something like this, will ha- something will happen in season one and then it's never revisited or there's never any closure. And I feel like this show does a really good job at wrapping up those things or like revisiting and identifying and. Um, I don't know, it just, it's very, very buttoned up. And I like that about this show. I just need yeah. to, and I feel like in moments like this with a train and with Maeve, um, they do a really good job at that because they're not like, they're not, I don't want to call like Maeve and a train side characters, but they, they kind of are in the, the grand scheme of everybody else. Yeah. But I just, I like how they're able to, to revisit these things. And it's, it's just, it's really good writing. Yeah. There's like an A through G plot. Uh, that all get their flowers. But yeah, the writers are doing a great job. And, and after Annie exposes Homelander, things escalate with that plot line. But meanwhile, uh, you know, MM's ex-wife's new boyfriend, Todd, is like basically pipelined. You know, he's like on the far right Homelander. He's a Homelander. Homelanderer. Hey, yeah, he's on Home Vought, teamer. He's on Vachan. Yeah, that's right. Um, and Mesmer, this other hero, Mesmer, kind of traps Butcher in a nightmare uh, about his past trauma with his brother Lenny, which is where we find out how much of an analog for that guy that Huey really is. Mm-hmm. Really so that's important. An image of Lenny. But also Homelander is of Soldier Boy's DNA. That's how he was created. So that's important. That makes Homelander very upset because he's got daddy issues, baby. Daddy? Kimiko. Daddy issues. Daddy. Come meet your grandson, daddy. Daddy. This is Homelander. Ah, oh, I gotcha. Yeah. <laughs> that's just what he would do. You're, you're daddy a Daddy boy. Uh, Kamiko is happier without her powers. We get the great moment of this. Se- Again, we talked about it, I think, in our season four coverage. But I love a good random musical. Yeah. Love it. Kamiko does great uh, with her hospital musical. Mm-hmm. Uh, and she finally Frenches Frenchie. And uh, it, it's, uh, it's, a little, it's a little weird for both of them. <laughs> it's very unfortunate because Frenchie's like, oh, OK, I got to I don't to think then. about this. And he leaves. And unfortunately, he gets like abducted. And poor mm-hmm. K- Kamiko is like. Was it that bad? Jesus, he's not coming back. She's like, yeah. <laughs> smelling her breath like shit. Sometimes you bang your friend and you're like, maybe we shouldn't have done that. Mm. That's what happened to Steve and I. Yeah. You're I like, mean, you know what? Wait, you don't, make, you don't think we should have done that? Let's not make the pod awkward. This is new to me. I thought it was great. We'll do talk we need, off air. Do we need to go into the other room? <laughs> no, we did talk, that. We're talk. not doing that ever again. Oh, okay. okay. <laughs> uh, Kamiko gets her powers back uh, willingly to protect her loved ones. So she mm-hmm. gives up her, her freedom the new life that she prefers because she realizes, oh, it sucks not being able to help my friends. Um, and this is where we find out that Temp V will always kill after three to five uses. And Butcher, who wants to take that risk, does not want Huey to take that risk. So he knocks him out before this last mission. And Huey apologizes to Starlight as well. He knows he's being a dick. This is where I was going to talk about the A-Train does reconnect with his brother throughout the show. There's the whole Blue Hawk uh uh, plot line. He does end up killing Blue Hawk, but in the act of running to kill him, he has a massive heart attack and ends up getting Blue Hawk's heart put in his body. So now he's back to normal. He's got a super heart, baby. Heart of gold. Mm. Mm. Uh, this is where also mm. the deep fucked an octopus, right? 
<laughs> yeah, he does. And he Just tries real quick. To, he tries to bring it in as a third with he and his wife, uh, but she is not having that. And she comes out with her own expose book. Um, Deeper. It's called Deeper. Yeah, something too deep. Even right? deeper or something. Deep, yeah. yeah. Deeper. I hardly know her. <laughs> but also Black Noir was a member of Payback. And this is what happened to him as he took his helmet off at that time and got brain damage. Um, yeah, he got it. was like, wasn't his face like put on a hot a car that was on fire and like melted his yeah. face. And, yeah, it's all. And he got bashed in the back of the head. And, and we see a young Stan Edgar mm-hmm. yeah. there as well. He's also a meerkat in the uh, the cartoon flashbacks. I, I liked that episode. Uh, and again, the Black Noir th- cartoon episode? Well, the that and also when he when they're like back in time and you can oh, just the, see like yeah. how stupid the 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 payback team was or whatever oh they're t- there's they got that like uh uh wasp dude that just like fuck so, shit up oh, and then shit. runs away but, and gets yeah. rocket launcher literally <laughs> rpg'd um but i like how black noir's character you know when he was talking and he was talking to stan Edgar and was like i want to take my mask off like i want people to know who i am and you know during the the 40s like that he was the only black man on the team, mm-hmm. but unbeknownst to, you know, the world. Wasn't it the eighties? Maybe. When, when, when he the gets 50s? captured. I yeah. It was like I, cold war era. Yeah. I think soldier boy, there was like the eighties when he went missing. Soldier boy, tell him. Soldier boy, tell him. But anyway, I'll, I'll look that up. Anyway, Stan Edgar, actually, yeah, it would make sense. It would be later because the Stan, Stan Edgar's Edgar, alive. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but just kind of the, the racial aspect of it is like, well, you know, you're going to take that risk with, you know, being exposed as a black man. Um, and so kind of the blowing up of the face, like just kind of, I don't know, diminishes him being his true self anyway. And he's already, it's kind of like he lost his voice in that sense too. Sure. Mm-hmm. So it's just kind of like literally, mm, literally. Yeah. So it was 1984. So when he got, oh, okay. when he went missing. Well, I read that book. <laughs> I think we all had to. <laughs> uh, Homelander ends up killing Noir because he knew that Soldier Boy was his yeah. quote unquote father. Kind he of. He was so distraught to find out that Noir lied to him because Noir's like, I mean, this whole show he would be berating the seven, like all y'all are fucking up. You need to, you need to tighten it up. Noir, you're killing it. Mm-hmm. Love you, dude. You're my bro. Like that was always just a funny through line gag. And then the fact that Noir has been keeping a secret from him this whole time. Could not handle it. His butt is the one dude he can count on. Punch yeah. through his whole body. It's yeah. violent. Cartoon guy dead. Ouchie. Yeah. So then there's the final showdown. Um, Homelander ended up getting Ryan, uh, which I think Congresswoman Newman gave him the location of of Ryan. Mm-hmm. And that was part of her getting the V for her daughter. Ryan. Uh, but Butcher <laughs> blamed Ryan for killing his mother. He was upset one day and let him believe that he was the cause of his mother's death. Mm-hmm. And so... That's the emotional window through which Homelander is able to crawl to get Ryan back to his side. And uh, Butcher ends up in that fight having to protect Ryan from Soldier Boy, who he kind of unleashed to get Homelander. Uh, So there's this giant fight. Huey's watching it from the control room. Um, He has to make this decision. Should I take the temp V one last time or should I? Oh, wait. And he ends up increasing the studio lights so that Starlight can defend herself. Um, we she can start flying. It's a great scene mm-hmm. with Kamiko uh, gearing up with her headphones. Um, I'm and, a maniac. And Maeve like. shows up. Yep. Queen Maeve tackles. She ends up losing an eye. She ends up saving everybody by tackling Soldier Boy out the window uh, and seemingly dies. Right. Mm-hmm. But Homelander doesn't want to kill the rest of them in front of Ryan because he has the opportunity to just laser them all. Mm-hmm. So yeah. we get another standoff, another like, I'll see you all later. Uh, Kind of I'll moment. get you next time, kids. And the season ends with Soldier Boy locked away again, this time in the U.S. Maeve did survive, but she has no powers anymore, so she's free to live a happy, normal life. The boys are back together, except that Butcher's going to die within 12 months maximum. Um, Congresswoman Newman having assassinated, because she had uh, Homelander tell the deep to assassinate the, the VP elect. Mm-hmm. So now she's well, running the, for the, VP. The potential running mate the running for mate, VP, yeah. yeah. And, Which was uh, that the dude who um, they tricked uh, in the first season where they had uh, the mimic guy like the sex take, scandal thing? Yeah, I think so, but I don't know for sure. Yeah, he looks, um, at least he looks familiar. Mm. Was he an old white guy? Yeah, probably. Yep. Mm-hmm. <laughs> That's how she got. They all look the same to me. Yeah, yeah they do. But so she had given uh, Ryan's location in order in exchange for Deep assassinating the VP nominee. And Homelander has a cult like following now. Um, they wear red hats. I'm just kidding. And, uh, <laughs> he's out with a crowd. One of the protesters, anti home teamer protesters hits Ryan with like an energy drink or a can of Coke or something. 
Uh, and in a rage, Homelander laser eyes him and kills him in front of everybody. And then everybody cheers. Led by Todd. And it's at this moment that the season ends. An iconic ending, I think. I think. I think so too. Yeah, An- Anthony Starr's performance of like him He's looking like, around like, oh <laughs> shit, and then everyone starts cheering, and his nerve is like, oh, okay, okay, this is this all is right, awesome. it's awesome. Like, like, I really can just do whatever the fuck I want. You know, like, he went from the previous se- season jerking off alone, saying I could do whatever I want, <laughs> to now he literally can do whatever he yeah. wants. He's yeah. excited, and it's crazy from that amazing tumultuous cliffhanger that we enter season four so don't forget to watch gen v there is some stuff you got to catch up on there but that's pretty much everything so look forward to our season four coverage next friday saturday sunday (laughs) and then every friday after that uh we're excited to be doing this with you guys Mm -hmm. that's all the time we have for right now my name is kit my name's madison and i'm steve and this was streaming things streaming the boys happy streaming Hmm.